It's at least 55 million kilometres from Earth. Getting there is so complicated that few countries have tried it. In fact, among the more than 40 missions to Mars since the 1960s, about half have failed. Fast forward to late last month when China announced an ambitious plan to orbit, land and deploy a rover on the Red Planet, all in one mission. The goal is to reach Mars by the year 2021 when the Chinese Communist Party marks its centenary. Later, we'll talk with a distinguished panel of space experts about the fascination with Mars and China's mission. But we begin in Beijing with CCTV's Tang Bo. And Bo, what are the mission's objectives and how will it be different than others that have gone before? The uncrewed spacecraft is expected to orbit the Mars, land and deploy a rover. Once on the Mar Martian surface, the Chinese rover could study the planet's soil, atmosphere, environment and look for traces of water. What's different about the mission compared to those by other countries is that the Chinese spacecraft is going to orbit the planet, land and deploy a rover all in one mission. And this will be the first of its kind in our space history once achieved. And besides, we know that the U.S., former Soviet Union, the European Space Agency and India have sent probes to Mars. But those probes never came back. But in the second step of the Chinese mission, the spacecraft will carry back samples of Mars surface that never has been done by any country so far in the world. And then... Bo, why the interest in Mars? Well, according to the chief designer of this Mars exploration mission, the mission has significance for understanding the evolution of the universe, the structure of matter, and the origin of life. He said that only by completing this probe mission can China say it has embarked on the exploration of deep space in this true sense. And so far, a number of missions have, spent, uh, have sent spacecraft to Mars. And China's previous attempt in 2011 to get a craft into orbit around Mars was unsuccessful. So far, only the U.S. has been successful in actually landing on the red planet with this Curiosity rover. So if China can pull this off, it'll be in a rare company. An end. OK, thanks, Bo. That's CCTV's Tang Bo reporting. Joining us now to talk about all this is Leroy Chiao. As a NASA astronaut, he spent 229 days in space over four missions, including a stint as commander of the International Space Station. He joins us from Houston. With us from Shanghai is Carl Bergquist. He is the administrator for the European Space Agency's Department of International Relations. John Logsdon is an author and professor emeritus at George Washington University, a board member of the Planetary Society. He founded the University's Space Policy Institute and joins us right here in Washington. And with us from Beijing is Yang Yuaguang. He is a professor with the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Yang Yuaguang, let me start with you. China wants to get to Mars. That's the next big space goal after it landed a lunar rover on the moon. Why Mars? What's the goal here? Well, uh, being a technician, it is very natural to understand that to choose Mars as the next goal. You see, uh, for deep space explorations, uh, one of the most important goals is to find the evolution of the solar system. Uh, this is to understand uh, what the future of the Earth will be and what the destiny of the human being. So uh, you see that Venus and Mars is very similar to the Earth. And studying the Venus and the Mars will be uh, helpful for us to have a better understanding uh, of uh, these kind of knowledges. And also, uh, Mars uh, can be a potential colony for the human being in the future. You see, the sun is becoming bigger and bigger, and maybe after one or two billion years, uh, the Mars will be a more feasible place for human being to stay there. Uh, and for this kind of goal, uh, we have to do some preparation works at uh, present stage. And so, uh, most capable uh, countries in space field choose the uh, Mars as a common goal. Uh, and from the aspect of technologies, you see that China has accomplished its Chang'e 1 and Chang'e 2 missions. So, in the future, we have the basic technologies mastered for a uh, orbital mission uh, in, uh, on the Mars. And also we have a Jade Rabbit uh, rover on the uh, lunar surface. So in the future, it, is, uh, it can be recognized as some of, uh, of the preparation work for the future uh, Mars rovers. Uh, so in the future, uh, we believe that uh, China has been ready uh, for a Mars mission. Leroy, you're the astronaut. You've been in space. Uh, you've been the commander of the International Space Station, among uh, other things. Now, we know that Mars is, is harsh terrain, it's inhospitable. So why the fascination with this planet? 
Well, I think it's human nature to want to explore. And uh, of course, the moon is our nearest neighbor, so we've been exploring the moon. But Mars is a very different place. First of all, technologically, it's harder to get to. It's harder to land something in the atmosphere, go through the atmosphere and land on the surface because it has enough of an atmosphere that you have to worry about uh, heating, resistance heating as you come down through it. But it doesn't have a thick enough atmosphere that you can reasonably use a parachute. So that's why you see these different uh, techniques of landing probes on Mars. Scientifically, there's a lot of interesting things. Uh, of course, there's a lot of evidence that suggests there was liquid water at one time on the surface of Mars, which of course makes us imagine that it's possible there could have been life or even existing life subterranean on Mars today. So it's a very interesting scientific place to study as well as a technological challenge. So after the moon, after exploring the moon, it's uh, reasonable that Mars would be the next logical place to go. John, the uh, current International Space Station, which is orbiting Earth, it will be retired by 2024. And after 2024, China will be the only country which would have some kind of a space lab or space station uh, up there. How significant is that and how important is that for Chinese space exploration to have that? Well, China is on the path of developing its human spaceflight capability. It's going to launch a small module later this year and visit it with a, uh, a Taikonaut crew and launch in 2018 the first module of a modest-sized space station intended to be completed by 2022. And that's the logical thing for a country that wants to be a spacefaring power, as China does, to do is develop both its robotic capability, Moon, Mars, with robots, and its human spaceflight uh, capability, and then sometime in the future, in the 2030s and beyond, have them converge, have humans, Chinese, go to the moon, eventually go to Mars, as, uh, as, because we're talking about hundreds of years of exploration ahead of us. Carl, let's look at the European Space Agency. It has worked with uh, China on other projects, the Double Star Project for one, and the uh, Chinese Academy of Science and the European Space Agency also have issued a call for proposals uh, for what would be a joint robotic mission. Uh, are we likely to see a great deal of cooperation between the Europeans and the Chinese on space exploration? I think so, yes. I think for, from a European perspective, we are certainly going to see more of uh, international cooperation and cooperation with China. And uh, we have co been cooperating on the Chang'e program, and uh, now we have, uh, ESA is running the, together with Roscosmos, the ExoMars program, and I'm sure that there will be opportunities uh, with the Chinese uh, Mars program to see how we can see, and also based on these uh, uh, programs then even more in the future. Right. Yuguang, Mars, as you know, we've been reporting, is 55 million kilometers from Earth. Uh, now, China plans to orbit, land, and deploy a rover in one mission. Why one mission? What's the advantage there? Well, first you see uh, China is a developing country. So uh, most of its investments on space field are engaged in the, such as the uh, communication, navigation, earth observation, which can directly serve the national economy. So uh, China only invests uh, a small part of its money on uh, manned space flight and deep space exploration. So saving the money is still a very uh, 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 important consideration for the future plans. Combining a uh, orbiter, a rover, and a lander mission in, in, in one can save much of the money. And also, because uh, we have a two-step uh, strategy for the future mass uh, robotic exploration. The first is to have uh, uh, the, mm, uh, what I mean, the, the rover, the lander, and the orbiter together. Uh, this can be also be recognized as a preparation for the future sample return mission, which will be a more great challenge in the future. And because, uh, you see, uh, China has already uh, uh, launched its Chang'e uh, Chang 1 and Chang'e 2 uh, lunar probes. Uh, which ha so China has mastered the uh, orbit insertion technologies to other uh, big celestial bodies. So in the future, uh, maybe the orbiter mission uh, to the Mars is not a very great challenge to China. And also because the, uh, we have already uh, had the Jade Rabbit rover on the uh, Chang'e 3 mission, so uh, we have already have some technology on the uh, rover so in the future, although uh, the Jade Rabbit robot has a mock function on the lunar surface, but it's not a very big problem. We believe that it, uh, this kind of problem can be solved. And to some extent, the, uh, the environment on the lunar surface is more crucial than the Mars surface. So 
The, the only great challenge is on the EDL, which means the entry, descending, and landing on the Mars surface. Uh, most, uh, many of uh, these kind of missions failed uh, during the past, so it, it, it is a great challenge for China Aerospace, and I hope my colleagues can solve this problem in the future. And this will be very critical for the successful uh, Mars mission for the first time. Leroy, when the Soviet Union still existed, there was something of a space race between the Soviet Union and the United States to reach the moon. Uh, now the uh, destination is Mars. Are we going to see a similar kind of race between the great powers here? Are we going to see a race, say, between China and the United States? Well, I don't think so. You know, when China launched Yang Li Wei into space in 2003, uh, there were those of us at NASA, some of whom thought that there would be a new space race, and people were actually kind of excited about that possibility. But that never really materialized, and the reason is that times have changed. Now, we have been cooperating now with Russia for a number of, you know, over, over 20 years, actually, and uh, we've been working with uh, our European partners, of course, in Japan and, and Canada as well. And, uh, you know, the International Space Station is a testament to the success of these kinds of collaborations. I mean, the space station is the most audacious uh, engineering construction project ever attempted and completed in space. And that partnership is one of the biggest success stories of the program. And so that, that partnership should be expanded to include countries like China uh, and other spacefaring nations as they come online. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to explore together now to, to do this, extend this international partnership, this model that we've built with ISS, and extend it beyond low Earth orbit. So I would like to see us, uh, you know, the United States to lead an international coalition to return to the moon and set up crew-tended bases and then one day travel internationally to Mars with the U.S. leading the way uh, as it has uh, throughout since the, what you, you know, what you've coined the, the space race. Right. Uh, John, uh, Yu Guang talked a moment ago there about some of the challenges that uh, scientists face putting a module on the surface of Mars. One of the things he said was, getting this module to land and take off again. What do you see as the major challenges to this? Well, I think that en that entry, descent, and landing is indeed the major technical challenge to getting something that weighs enough to carry a lot of instruments on the surface of Mars. Uh, and uh, Leroy talked about the uh, uh, desirability of cooperation. I think cooperation in the Mars mission would be a good thing. Uh, the, the place in the world that has experience in entry, descent, and landing on Mars is the U.S. Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the NASA facility. It would be good if that experience could be shared with our Ch Chinese colleagues. But we have these political obstacles in the way of that cooperation. Uh, they don't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, they're good arguments for why the U.S. and China have a kind of adversarial relationship having to do with national security space and national security overall. But I think uh, space cooperation is an area where we can transcend that competition and begin to work together. Getting back to the challenges, I mean, what about technical things like establishing a communications network? Um, or even we've seen these windstorms on Mars, which are totally unpredictable. I mean, how do you counter that? I mean, is it possible in some way to simulate Martian conditions on Earth? Well, first of all, too many people have seen the movie The Martian right. with the opening <laughs> windstorm, which cannot happen on Mars. Okay. It, it was the one uh, technically unfeasible I part of, of the movie story. You needed it for the story. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, we communicate back and forth to Mars every day uh, with the Curiosity rover there. Uh, we have a series of uh, U.S., European uh, uh, satellites orbiting Mars that can serve as communication relays. If we work together, uh, it's for everybody's betterment to solve these technical problems and, and give examples of peaceful cooperation along the way. Carl, looking at it from the uh, European side, where do you see China's space exploration program going? Well, we see, uh, of course, in Europe where we have, uh, we've, we of course believe, or are strong believers in international cooperation. First of all, because international cooperation at ESA is uh, our daily bread. We cooperate between 22 member states. And we certainly see, of course, we, we have uh, today three strategic partners, the United States, Russia, and China. And this has been adopted by the, the member states of our 22 states. 
And uh, so we are certainly seeing that we will, we will see more and more cooperation in the future. And I fully agree with the former speakers who said that, yes, they will, we, will, we have to cooperate together to continue to explore um, planets like Mars, because it doesn't make sense. Uh, uh, there should, we should really go ahead and, and, uh, and foster such a cooperation. If you like what you just saw, follow us on social media and visit our website, cctv-america.com.